Students, we have learning goals for this video and you might notice the title is Implication. Well, to understand the concept of implication and be able to apply it is our learning goal. Our success criteria basically is for us to solve problems and come to conclusions and to generate truth tables which are based on implication. So let's define a few terms in the beginning. Let's say we've got two statements. We've got statement P and statement Q. We're going to work just with two statements in this video. And if P comes first, it can be called the antecedent. If Q comes after P, it's called the consequent. A couple of important terms. If we put those together in a compound statement using that form if statement then statement, that is a case of implication. So logically that is consistent with what we call implication. And if we had whatever statement P is, if P then Q, it would fit like that if they're defined as the antecedent and the consequent. Um, and the logical mathematical symbols come out like that. So just to be clear, we've got the symbol for implication is that. So that would be read as P implies Q. So students, formally we have what you see on your screen for compound statement can be formed using an if-then methods a uh, method of connection we call that statement that compound statement an implication well let's see how the truth table pans out with two statements in a compound statement bound together by the connective of implication so we've been familiar with truth tables we've done a bit of work on them we've looked at truth tables with and or exclusive or not um, and a few others. What about implication? Well, we've got P and Q, and you're used to setting up the truth tables as such true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false, which covers all four combinations. P implies Q would go in the next column. Further down the track we'll see um, more efficient ways of structuring our tables because the tables will grow somewhat bigger than this um, for a number of reasons you will see. But just for this video we're looking at P implies Q, the result will go in this last column. It's very helpful I find for student learning if we look at an example. And this is a great corny example and it's, um, by the way there is no actual money involved in this. Um, I'm just saying this as an example, okay? Um, money, no. You're not getting any money from me. You're getting plenty from me as it is. So, we've got, let's define P as um, you get, you achieve, you achieve an A for this specialist math subject. Woohoo! For specialist maths, you achieve an A. That's the antecedent. The consequent, I give you $100. Remember that disclaimer. Give you $100. Okay. Let's see how that pans out in our truth table. So, true and true would be you get an A for mass, and then I give you $100. That's consistent, and nobody's told a lie. Um, there's nothing ridiculous about that. So that would get the, in implication, that would get the condition true. Now, the remaining ones, some are logical or intuitive and some are counterintuitive initially, until we think about it a bit. Let's zoom down to the last one. It's fairly easy. It's false and false. So, Yep, you don't get an A for math, and I don't give you that hundred bucks. Well, that would give a 
uh, true in the implication column because it's consistent and no one's told a lie. Okay, what about the set going back to the second row? You get an A for maths and I don't give you a hundred dollars. What? Okay, well, that's obviously a borrowed, that's a lie, and that would get a false. Fair enough. About the third one, it, the final one that we've got to look at is false and true. That's a weird one, isn't it? So you don't get an A for maths, but I still give you a hundred dollars. A lot of people would be tempted to put false there, because that doesn't sound right. I mean, I said if I, if you got an A, I'd give you a hundred dollars. It's actually true. If the antecedent is false, there is no obligation, for want of a better word, for the consequent to follow anything. So that as soon as the antecedent is true, you'll always get a uh, sorry false. As soon as the antecedent is false, you'll always get a true in the implication column. So it's saying just because um, I give you a hundred dollars if you got an A doesn't mean I won't give you a hundred dollars. Okay, so I might feel really generous. It doesn't mean I've lied to you. So that that gets a true. So we've got true, false, true, true. Now get used to that pattern because you'll need it quite a lot. Let's do some deepening tasks now that help us assimilate this knowledge and apply it.